Hello everybody. Um, in this video we're going to be looking at this following integral which um, which is a function of t and we wish to find basically a closed form of this for all or for most t. Um, and I say most because weird things happen. Anyway, uh, so we have 0 to infinity x to the t divided by e to the x minus 1 um, and at first glance this kind of reminds me of the gamma function because normally we would have x to the t over e to the x and there's no helpful substitution that will sort of force it into this position without making the entire integral like a huge mess. Another thing is that um, uh, parts will not be helpful because normally if we had x to the t we would if we did the di method we would put it in the d and then differentiate it until we get um, just constants, but we would have to integrate 1 over e to the x minus 1, which is possible, but then we'd have to integrate it over and over t times. And uh, I'm not really looking forward to doing that. Now, the sort of u minus 1 of this denominator sort of reminds me of the series um, of the infinite series of the just a simple geometric progression um, but of course we would have it flipped and this only this conversion only applies when the absolute value of u is less than one and we're dealing with e to the x which definitely um, is not bounded by 1. It go on, on our interval it goes from 1 to infinity. However, the bounds 0 to 1 are the inverse of these bounds. So e to the negative x the absolute value of e to the negative x would be less than 1, or less than or equal to 1, really, but shh. Um, so it would be possible that we could, you know, use e to the negative x. And in fact, that would get it into the 1 minus u form if we factored out e to the x here. And that would also get us our x, x to the t e to the x um, that we wanted from our gamma function. So what I'm saying is that if we factor out an e to the x from the denominator and we bring it up to the numerator, then we get this expression. And so we're claiming that we can use, we can now use our power, uh, our power series of 1 over 1 minus u to turn this integral into a series, or say that we're integrating a series. And um, when all is said and done, we get the integral of x to the t times the sum, or really I should I'll just uh, bring the x to the t inside the sum. Let's say n goes from 1 to infinity of x to the t e to the negative n x dx. And the reason why we start at 1 and not 0 is because we have an extra factor here. So I'm just incorporating that into the sum. And so now, all of these types of functions are um, integrable. So 
we can, since we're integrating a sum, we can take the sum of the integrals. And I'm sure there's some uh, rigorous math that goes behind claiming that, but shh, I'm a high schooler after, after all. Um, and so we get that we are integrating x to the t e to the negative x dx and now this looks like um, something we could really apply the gamma function on um, so if we were to do the substitution of u equals an x, then uh, the bounds stay the same, and we get, um, well, let's see what we get. So now we have sum n goes to 1 to infinity. If we plug in x equals u over n into this, we get u to the t over n to the t, and our dx is equal to du over n, so we get 1 over n uh, to the t plus 1, and then nx is u, so we get e to the negative u du. And now we can factor out the n to the t plus 1. And so we get the sum 1 over n to the t plus 1 times, and then once we factor that out, we have u to the t times e to the negative u which is gamma of t plus 1. Which is a constant in terms of n. And so we can factor out gamma of t plus 1 out of the sum. And the sum itself is a special function. And let's see if I can... Yeah, that's as close I'll get to a zeta. So this is the Riemann zeta function, which is the sum of the reciprocal of positive integers to some power. And specifically, that power is the input of the zeta function. And uh, we are done. So this integral, um, the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the t over e to the x minus 1, is equal to gamma of t plus 1 times the Riemann zeta of t plus 1. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.